Guess what? Steam OS is now available on everything. Well, technically, you can install it on the Asus ROG Ally or the Ally X or the Legion Go. Legion Go S is actually shipping out with Steam OS already installed in the handheld. But if you already have an AMD based handheld, is it worth installing Steam OS? Are you going to see any sort of performance gains that are there? And is this going to help at all with battery life? Those are some of the questions that popped up underneath my installation of Steam OS 3.8 on my Asus ROG Ally in the comments section. And rightfully so, I wanted to make a video about it. People started talking about it and I was like, you know what? That's actually a really awesome video idea. And this is exactly that. Now in this video, the way that I'm gonna set it up is I'm actually going to be focusing on two things. One, I wanna see how games perform at different TDPs. I want to see how it's going to perform at 30 watts, 25 watts, 15 and 10 watts. And I also want to see how it's going to perform on SteamOS using simple Decky TDP to adjust the settings to reflect what we would see in Windows. Also, I wanna see how the battery life is going to be well consumed. I wanna see how long it's going to last on Steam OS versus Windows OS. And at the end of the day, which platform is best depending on the games that you want to go ahead and play. Now, obviously there are pros and cons to each one of the platforms. You can obviously go with Windows OS because of the compatibility that's there, but there are a ton of things that are happening in the background. With Steam OS, although it is a cleaner setup, there are definitely some compatibility issues that are there with some of the games that you want to go ahead and run on that platform. Now, the way that I have this set up on the Asus ROG Ally is I have everything set up onto one SSD. I've got three partitions. One is going to be set up for Windows. The other one is going to be set up for Steam and the other one is going to be for games to be shared across both of the OS's. This is going to be using BetterFS. It's just a much easier way to get things set up. If you want to go ahead and find out how to do that, let me know. I can make a whole video talking about that specifically. But at the end of the day, it's just an easier way to share games across both OS's. That way you can dual boot and you can just have the well, best of both worlds. If you need a game that runs specifically on Windows, then it can run there without any issues at all. Vice versa, if you just want to stick with SteamOS because of the ease of use and kind of go over from time to time, it's just easier, more convenient, and again, best of both worlds. No matter which OS it is that you're considering going with, you wanna make sure that you protect your data online. You remember that one Shady's website that you went to to buy that one thing that we probably shouldn't be talking about online? Yeah. Chances are that site is actually selling your data to a data broker and that data broker is auctioning off your information to the highest bidder. More likely than not, the highest bidder is probably a scammer of some kind or somebody that is in charge of phishing scams. Now you wanna make sure that you protect yourself and Delete Me helps protect you from, well, yourself. It protects you from the risks of being harassed, doxxed, attacked due to politics, occupation, opinions that you've shared online, risks of identity thefts, phishing scams, stalking, and so much more. Delete Me helps keep your personal information private. I've been personally using Delete Me for just over three months, and within one month, I got a data report of over 848 listings being removed and 106 data brokers contacted to have my data removed as well. Now, I talked with Delete Me to get you guys the best offer possible, and they're offering 20% off all of their consumer plans. You can technically scan this QR code that's gonna pop up over here, or you can go to the website, joindeleteme.com slash Rudy. Just make sure that you use the code Rudy to get 20 percent off. I'll have links down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. And thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. All right, now that some bills are paid, we can go ahead and talk a little bit more about the methodology on things. See, in order to get everything captured, I used an Elgato 4KX capture card, but I ran everything on the Asus ROG Ally at 1080p. I know that there are some people that prefer 720 just because of the frames that are there, but for me, I want to be able to get a 1080p image whenever possible and get around 45 FPS, then I'm personally happy. I know that some people prefer getting the 60 FPS and going over that hump, but for me, 45, I'm happy. Now, when I was trying to test things at a 30 watt TDP, I couldn't use the JSO docking station that I was primarily using for all of this testing. I actually had to use Asus's charging dock in order to actually get that up and running. But aside from that, everything else was done through that docking station. Also, I want to mention that there were some interesting things that happened at different wattages and different TDPs, and I'll talk a little bit more in depth as we go through things. But yeah, Definitely some interesting stuff. Now, if you do want to see some footage or see me horrendously play through some games, I will have some things set up on my Patreon page. You don't have to pay in order to get in. It's just so you guys can go ahead and check it. And it's something that isn't 
YouTube centric. It's just a little bit more BTS stuff in terms of everything. So if you want to go ahead and check out some of the details on things, then go ahead and check it out over there. One thing that I do want to go ahead and say is that at 30 watts, everything ran as best as it could. Even still, though, Windows had one game that ran particularly better than on Steam OS, albeit just a little bit, and that's Expedition 33. Everything else ran better on Steam OS for the most part, but seeing the Expedition 33 ran better on Windows OS means that there are some games that just simply run better on that OS than on Steam OS at 30 watts. At 25 watts, things started to get really interesting because on the Steam OS side of things, everything just ran fine. But on the Windows OS side of things, I started to get a bunch of weird errors and pop-ups that happened. For example, when I tried to launch Oblivion Remastered, I ended up getting a notification that I did not have enough RAM or VRAM in order to run the game. But I was able to launch it at 30 watts. At 25 though, it didn't even run at all. It would pretty much get stuck at a loading screen and couldn't boot. The same thing could basically be said for Doom Dark Ages. At 1080p, I could technically run it at 30 watts, but at 25 watts, there were so many issues that popped up when I was running the game on Windows that it was pretty much unplayable at that point. Now, I will say that technically you can go ahead and lower the resolution. By default, I believe it was 960p or 900p if I remember correctly. But at the end of the day, I wanted to see how things ran at 1080p in order to keep things even across the board for the sake of testing for science. But at the end of the day, I just let it go. At 15 watts, things got even more interesting because, it, okay, like on the Steam OS side of things, everything ran just fine and it was running at the CDP that I had set. But on the Windows side of things, there were some instances where games just ran over or beyond that TDP that I had already set up. For example, when I was running Expedition 33, at 25 watts, it was asking for 30. And at 15 watts, it was asking for 20. So in order to actually get it to reflect the proper TDP that I had set the system to, I had to manually adjust everything to make sure that everything was right and in fairness that way you know the steam os if i set it at 15 it's going to be 15. so i want to make sure that on the windows os side of things it was also 15 as well but the performance that i saw in lies of p at 15 watts on the windows os side of things was absolutely crazy it just surprised me in comparison to the steam os side and at the same tdp i almost kind of had to do a double take to make sure that everything was running well but just like the 25 watt tdp setting for windows doom dark ages and oblivion remastered didn't work or run at all. And that's gonna pretty much be the same for the rest of the testing. At 10 watts, I mean, what do you expect? 10 watts TDP for 3D games is just not that good. I wouldn't recommend it at all unless you're playing some older titles. That being said, I'm surprised at how well Lies of P ran across the board. Even on Windows OS, it ran relatively well to the point to where if you knock down the resolution to 720, let FSR do its work and just get a better overall experience, then yeah, you would actually have a pretty stable game, lock it at 30 FPS, and you're pretty much set in terms of playing this game at a decent frame rate. Now, regardless of that, all of the games ran better on Steam OS than it did on Windows, but it's still something that I think bears mentioning, especially with, well, using something like this at a 10 watt TDP, especially with the battery life that you can expect at that TDP. All right, battery life when it comes to my ROG Ally is a little bit different than most people because I had a 65 watt hour battery mod from JSO. I'll have a link to the video that way you can go ahead and check it out for yourself. But it's still relatively interesting simply because of the fact that this is kind of a halfway point to actually the ROG Ally X's version of battery life at 80 watt hours. The difference is just awesome. But one thing that I will go ahead and say that the battery life that I did get in SteamOS versus Windows OS is unsurprising. SteamOS just simply has less things going on in the background in comparison to Windows OS so that when Windows OS is running, there's just more things sipping up juice from that battery that's there. That being said, it still was closer than I thought it would be from the testing that I got. Obviously, you know, this is me just playing games and testing things out and seeing more or less how it ran at specific TDPs, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Obviously, I couldn't test things at 30 watts because 30 watts is technically being plugged in, but at 25, 15, and 10 watts, the differences are definitely staggering. When it comes to Steam OS at 25 watts, you're looking at an hour and 38 minutes, and the difference between Steam and Windows OS is a few minutes. Same thing at 15 watts, you're looking at just a few minutes of a difference, and at 10 watts, that's where there's a little tiny bit more leeway towards the Steam OS side of things, but regardless of that, the difference is so minute that at the end of the day, if you're picking one over the other for 
more battery optimization, then it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You're going to get good battery life regardless of which OS you're going to be picking. Personally, the majority of my gaming experience growing up was on consoles, the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, Playstations, all that stuff like that was what I grew up on. And even now I still have an Xbox, Playstation 5. I still have a Nintendo Switch at home because I have a son and that's just an easy route for him to go ahead and play and experience titles. And also my wife enjoys playing video games, too. So it all kind of just pans out and works out. That being said, the main computer that I have at home that I use to edit photo and video for my day job, as well as play video games, is Windows. It runs on Windows. It doesn't run on Linux. The handheld, the main one that I go to, though, does run Steam OS. Well, technically, it's Bazite OS because it's just the route that I go. I talked about that, about how I keep on going to the ROG Ally X. I'll have that linked somewhere up here so you can go ahead and check that out. But at the end of the day, I just I want to have a beautiful, seamless gaming experience. And that's just the route that I go. I recommend most people go that route as well, especially if they want to focus on just PC handheld gaming as a whole. If you want to have the you know perks of both Windows and SteamOS, then yeah, by all means, do go dual boot. It's just easier that way. That way you have pros and cons. But at the end of the day, it really just depends on what you want to go ahead and have for your own experience. So which one is the best way? to go if you are considering getting Steam OS instead of using Windows for your PC handheld. Well, at the end of the day, it really just depends on the pros and cons that you want. If you play mainly multiplayer titles, then you probably wouldn't want to go with Steam OS and would rather stick with the Windows because there's just a huge level of compatibility with all of the games that are going to be running on your PC handheld. If you want to just stick with single player titles, which most of the time just run well outside of the box, then yeah, go ahead and go with Steam OS. For me personally, I prefer Steam OS. I don't really play too many multiplayer titles to begin with. I prefer single player adventures, and that is just the way that I go. With Baldur's Gate 3, with Expedition 33, I mean, all of these titles that are single player adventures just feel great on Steam OS. I don't have to worry about any crazy updates from time to time. I can just stick and focus with what works well. A good half measure is Bazite OS. And I say half measure kind of lightly because it does deliver a full on experience that is very similar to Steam OS, albeit it is much more open source than Steam OS is outright. Now, obviously for most people, they may not care about that stuff, but if you do want to have something that has much more flexibility and many more options than Steam OS, then yeah, I would probably consider Bazite OS at the end of the day. But for me personally, Steam OS, Bazite OS, either way, I want to stick with the Linux. I want to stick with the Steam or Steam OS like experience. It's just better for me personally than Windows. But what do you guys think of Steam OS versus Windows? I mean, which which OS are you going to be going for? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on things. And by the way, don't forget to check out the delete me thing. It's actually pretty awesome. I'm definitely impressed with how much has been scrubbed from the internet. But regardless of that, I want to hear your thoughts on things. If you want to hear my thoughts on installing Bazite OS onto your ROG Ally or Ally X, then click this video over here. And if you want to hear my thoughts on Steam OS 3.8 being installed onto the ROG Ally, then click this video over here. And until next time, guys, I will see you on the next one. Peace.